welcome. My name is Maria Kosmakos, and uh, welcome to a special Energy Talk Stories. Um, today we have a very special NHS Talks um, Stories. We have Heritage Greece alumni, and they will be going over uh, reflecting on the impact of the Heritage Greece program in their life. Um, today we have, again, host, moderator, and journalist, and anchor, Shannon Smith. So I'm going to hand it over to Shannon. Go ahead, Shannon. Thank you, Maria. Hello, friends. Hi, everybody on Facebook and uh, my prayer. I'm Shannon. I'm happy to be here again this week with one person I know, Paul, um, and a bunch of other people who I've never met till right now, but we all have one thing in common, is that we all went through the Heritage Cruise Program. Um, and so I want to start with, because I know Alden King is watching this right now, and she's the reason that I was part of this program. We went to high school together, and I saw she went to Greece, and I was like, what the heck? I'm Greek. I want to go to Greece, and uh, learned about the program through her, and I, as you can tell, I don't have a Greek name. I'm jealous of all of you, so I didn't grow up with a lot of Greek culture, um, so it was neat getting to go over to Greece and really understand where my family came from and immersing myself in the language and the food. Um, so it was a really big changing point for me, and I know for everybody else on this screen. So I kind of want to just open this up to all of you and tell me a little bit about how you found out about Heritage Greece, um, and because we all went different years. So I'm, I'm going to put uh, Vasiliki if you want to start. Of course. So hello, everybody. My name is Vasiliki, and I actually found out about Heritage Greece because my older brother decided to um go on it and he had the absolute best time of his life he got to connect with his culture and his homeland he met a ton of friends that he sticks with today including you know shout out tabitha and nick who i know are on this call and it's just truly really been a great experience for my family awesome paul i'm tossing over to you Sure. So good evening, everyone. I'm Paul Markakis, and I was uh, looking for a free trip to Greece. So I Googled free trips to Greece and came across the Heritage Greece program and fortunately learned that uh, the program was so much more than just a free trip to Greece and met this incredible network of alumni, about 500 strong and growing every year, and so excited to be here to share with you all a little bit about what that looks like. I still remember uh, writing my essays uh, with my class for modern art, uh, but then actually going later in the summer to Andros uh, and seeing that art was really amazing. Um, and then we were also paired up with a Greek peer. I'm still actually friends uh, with those ACG peers today, which is a, a really fantastic takeaway. Um, and uh, the last part that I really appreciated was um, not just spending uh, time in one place in Greece, but uh, this really immersive experience of going to Sunio and all over Athens and the islands. Um, and it's just this amazing holistic experience of getting to see Greece as many different places from the student's perspective and many different people. And I want to go back to Vasiliki because you were the most recent grad. And when I was there, I think maybe maybe 30 of us. Um, in 2013, but I know it's gotten bigger. It's gotten a lot bigger. I think this past summer they were trying to do two sessions, but my my um, my summer it was one session. I think there was about 60 kids. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it definitely has grown since everyone has gone through it, which is exciting because more people get to go to Greece and we all get to enjoy. And it sounds like uh, through all the years we had we had similar components of you had the language courses you had different food immersions with a, a local family there going to the island. I'll never forget taking the, the language class about how to ask for directions and then uh, dropping us off in Monastiraki and said, good luck, like have fun, find us. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but it made you really learn and it was really cool. Um, so I just, for people who may be watching this who maybe want to go when it happens again one day, what are some of those memories that you guys have that just really stick with you so many years later? And I'm going to make Paul go first. Oh yeah, happily, because uh, as Nick mentioned, Nick and I went um, to Greece together, and I remember um, just, we got invited to like their graduation party for the college, which the way they do it there, like their end of year, like graduation celebration feels like a prom, and we all like got to dress up, participate in that, all be out by the pool, outdoors, at night, and it was just so much fun being able to see a completely different side of what the university experience is like for um, for completely different culture and it was just insanely exciting and uh, just an extraordinarily memorable experience. 
And for people who are not totally familiar, we partner with the American College of Greece. So that's the college she's talking about. Um, really phenomenal people that go there. Um, Nick, do you have any fun memories you want to share? Yeah, so they actually do call it um, prom. It's, it's uh, like an end of the, I don't know why they, they call it that, but it, that was definitely a really fun memory. And I think just to piggyback off of that, just like, I mean, when you're in school, I, I was a fresh, I just finished my freshman year. So it's already a completely immersive new experience being, you know, at a, at a college university, but being able to supplement that the following year or the following summer and now go re-experience, um, you know, being at a foreign university and being in the, the dorms and being with this new group of people. Um, not only with all the benefits of, uh, of, you know, all the Greek culture and heritage. I mean, it was, it was such a cool compliment to that. And I think the thing that I um, enjoy mo enjoyed most was uh, meeting the peers. So during the Heritage Greece program, there are these university peers um, that kind of from on the Greek side that come along on a lot of our trips and they, they help us out with um, a lot of the programs that we're doing. And a lot of us developed really good friendships with them that have lasted many, many years. Um, and they've in turn come to the United States and, and visited us. Um, so I think the, the Greek peers uh, were one of my, meeting the Greek peers were one of my favorite parts of the trip. But I mean, who was the, who was the best person you met on that trip? Uh, well, on the I, trip or I, so far in Heritage Greece? I think in Heritage Greece. I think she's right next yeah. to you. Right? Yeah, so um, the woman to my left for about 30 feet, who's also on this call, Tabitha, um, I met during one of the annual reunions um, in Miami a few years after the trip, which I think we'll probably get into as well. But a um, fantastic experience on top of being able to meet additional people to make friends. Um, I met Tabitha, and we live in Chicago and started dating, and we are going to get married in Greece next year. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know that. How exciting. And yeah. Vasiliki, I think you, you have uh, something to say too, right, about somebody? Yeah, so my my older brother actually met his fiance on the same trip the same year as Tabitha's year. So a lot of relationship has, relationships have come out of Heritage Greece for sure. Oh my gosh, so much Greek love, and that's the perfect uh, segue, and I want to talk to Elizabeth, this is not related at all, but she has a dating Greek show, and I think we should all learn about it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that was a really smooth segue. Um, <laughs> yeah, so during quarantine, my sister and I, been, I was in Ohio up to a week ago, um, I live in Los Angeles, but I was in Ohio with my little sister, and we were like, what can we do to bring people together during this time, everyone feels so far apart, you know, all of our favorite Greek events getting shut down, the Greek festivals not happening um, unless it's drive through, but you know, it's not the same. And so my sister and I wanted to do this like blind dating show for Greek Americans. So it's called Dating Greek. It's on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, but our Instagram account is really where it's at. So go find us there. We are on our second season, just debuted episode two. We've got 16 Greek Americans from across the country that go on these blind phone call dates but you get to watch what's going on. So they don't see each other, but we get to see them going on these dates and not gonna like, obviously a little biased, but this is an exciting season. There is a lot to look forward to. So I'm totally gonna hype that. Thank you for the, for the moment and the spotlight. <laughs> and if anybody is looking for Greek love, you can email Elizabeth afterwards or DM her and try to get on season three. Yes, please. Shannon, that's how we change your name from Smith to Smithopolis or something, right? Hi. Maybe I could just do that, Smithopolis. I'm dating a non-Greek boy. He does like Euros, so you know, we'll let him stay. <laughs> um, so I want, I want to take it back to Greece. Uh, we'll move from Ohio back to Greece. Um, I'm obviously one of those beautiful places in the world. I think we can all agree on that. Um, I kind of want to talk about... I didn't grow up with a big Greek heritage. I don't know if you guys did. I want to kind of talk about in your eyes how going to Greece made you kind of more connected with that Greek culture you have, whether you grew up with it or whether you just discovered it there. So I'm going to let uh, Tabitha, if you want to start with that. Yeah, so I think that um, actually something that happened with me going on the trip was I think I was personally more in the most interested um, in my family and of, out of all my siblings in like the Greek culture and, and our heritage. Um, I'm the oldest of seven kids, so I have a very large family. 
and my parents are both, uh, they're born, both born in the US, but their parents uh, are immigrants from Greece. And uh, we, they passed away when we were a lot younger, so we didn't have that, um, you know, that influence it throughout our lives uh, just because of that. So my parents grew up more with the traditional Greek household, but then because they were Amer Greek Americans, they kind of lost touch a little bit over the years. And I think that going on the trip for me, it not only sparked like that uh, interest in reconnecting with that, with the Greek community for myself, but it also has inspired a lot in my family as well. So um, I just feel like my parent, my family started going back to, after I went on the trip, they saw how much fun I had and then they started planning trips for uh, their, our family to go back to Greece and they've been uh, since I went, they've been twice uh, over the summer, and I think that they just kind of started reincorporating um, some more of the traditions and culture that they kind of lost over over the years of just being in the U.S. and kind of getting, uh, pushing it all to the side. So that was something that I think we took away. That's a really neat, like, direct change. Like, other people's lives were impacted because of your trip to Greece. And I think we probably all have some similarity where like you come back and you can't stop talking about it. So they got to listen at some point. Um, Vasiliki, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. For sure. So I was very lucky to grow up in a very Greek household. However, I felt as though a lot of my friends were from my high school or from college were uh, very American. So when I got to Heritage Greece, I was able to meet so many people with with um, all these similarities that I had never really experienced before. So now I kind of have my Greek parea and I'm able to go to other events and, um, and be able to get in touch that way and bring it home to America, which has been really amazing. Love that. And I uh, say so most of us on this call went a little bit earlier. So I want to ask uh, Nicole, it's now been 10 years since this trip. How is it still kind of impacting your life to this day? Yeah, um, in so many ways. Uh, the trip was the first time that I had been to Greece, um, so that was really special for me. Um, I have uh, both sets of parents are Greek, but we hadn't really spoken uh, Greek that much around the house, and I had gone to Greek school. So being able to speak Greek in Greece and take the language classes uh, was really special and something that I continue to work on and get to go back and practice. Um, the other bit was the friends and family um, and the parea that I've taken from the Heritage Greece class. Um, and all the new parea that I've met through um, the additional events and the new classes that I've gone through. Um, so spending time with them in Greece and all over the world and meeting family um, and new friends that I hadn't met before um, was a really big takeaway. And I kind of want to touch on too, for people who've never been on a trip like this, any trip overseas, you're, you're going with a bunch of strangers. Like you don't know anybody. You're just like, I oh, hope we become friends. And then somehow, you all do. Um, can you guys kind of talk about, um, and Nick, I'll let you go first, talk about how somehow there's like an instant bond that happens as soon as this trip starts. Yeah, I mean, I, it is it is definitely a, an awesome experience where you're going, um, I mean, I went in 2012, so almost 10 years uh, in the past. But, you know, you, you show up, everyone's excited, and you're, you're around all these strangers, if you will. Um, but I think as you start going through all these activities together and experiences, I mean, everything that, you know, art and, and team set up, I mean, it's such a great bonding experience, whether it be going to the Greek language and culture classes in the morning to going to do different activities at the Acropolis and visit the different museums and go to Union and um, the islands. I, I think every activity just keeps accumulating this bond that you build with everybody um where you know you could take it wherever you want to go you can you know make the experience as rich as you want it to be um you know by making those connections with with your peers and i think for me i didn't realize and it was kind of a i'm sure paul can relate towards the end of the trip it was a little bit sad because i mean we we just spent two weeks making all these friends and we didn't know like when am i going to see these people next um and uh a few years later then um the National Hellenic Society started uh, inviting the Heritage Greece alumni to the annual reunions. And that was a fantastic way to kind of enrich the connections and bonds that we made with people, not only from our own years, but for from uh, other years. So, I mean, I'm, I'm extremely close with a lot of the people that have gone on Heritage Greece in years that I didn't even go on, but that can consider a lot of them my best friends and obviously my fiance. 
Can I ask all you guys something, including you, Shan? I'm going to start with you, Shan. Why do you think it's important to continue and maintain Hellenic heritage? Uh, I never even really knew about it until I went on the trip. Um, and it, it kind of goes back into like when I was, I remember being on the boat to Andros and like sitting there and being like, I think my family was from Sparta. I didn't know that. That's cool. Um, so it kind of like, I think once you realize you're like, oh my gosh, like this is where my family was from. It kind of gives you more of a connection, honestly, to the world in general. You're like, damn, I've been here for a long time. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> but it, okay. it's, it's just kind of cool. To, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It, it, it was, for me, it was really neat to see there was this whole, like, such rich culture that has such a big family orientation in the middle with so many, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of years of traditions that I'm, like, had to rediscover things I'd never known. And, like, in the, like Tabitha was saying in the process, like, my mom started to get more into it. And so I think it's important to to preserve that in a time where a lot of our parents and grandparents became Americanized because that was the thing to do and now it's like the time where everyone's starting to realize the cultures that made them who they are and for all of us if we didn't have that little bit or big bit of Greek we wouldn't be who we are or where we are now. All right you're in charge now so you got to pick someone next. No, in charge, but just go down the line Paul. <laughs> yeah so I think uh, Shannon hit on a really interesting point which is that that dispersion of people everywhere. When I think back to my parents, my grandparents, the church is really the focal point of all of the Greeks getting together. And even though there was the religious component, the community component of every Sunday, all of the Greeks went to the church. All of the Greeks got together at church-related events. They lived in the same neighborhoods. They socialized at the church. Even me growing up when um, before Facebook, before social media, when you wanted to go see your Greek friends while you're playing in the Greek basketball league together and have practice three times a week. And looking at the generations with Facebook and social media, everybody's so dispersed that while a lot of people don't necessarily have that in-person contact, there's also the opportunity to keep in touch with not just the Greek heritage of your own family background, but the Greek communal heritage of folks like all of us on this panel and all of the alumni that when we get together at these reunions and these events and we're all out there Greek dancing and partying as if we were in Kanyao, like my background behind me, instead of uh, in rainy Maryland, like we had today, it feels like we're back in Greece celebrating our heritage and be, to be able to replicate that together in the United States and continue to foster that bond and one day pass it along to our kids and our grandkids is such a gratifying opportunity. Vasiliki? Yeah, so I think the main thing for me with keeping up with Greek heritage is kind of remembering where you've come from and having that humility. Because I think that that type of immigrant mentality that our parents and grandparents have had has led them to do um, leaps and bounds. And I think that if we continue to remember and, and never forget that, then we can push it forward every generation and just make sure that we are the best version of our community and the best version of ourselves. So I think that's another reason why it's important. Elizabeth? Yeah, I feel like, um, especially having done this dating show now, like people connect so easily and quickly when the Greeks just do. And that happened like day one of Heritage Greece. Everybody was like, how have I only known you for 24 hours or two days? And then by the end, it was just like, oh, we have to stay in touch. And, you know, I can't say stay in touch with all 50 people from the trip, but I mean, I'm seeing like somebody that went on the trip with me. We're going camping next week when he's in California. One of the heritage, one of the peers, like when she was in Los Angeles, I saw her a couple times. So it really is like relationships that are long lasting, whether or not you stay in touch on a daily basis. And I think it's because we all share that same background, those fa family values and those, you know, um, those just like reasons for living and kind of what we all take from being Greek. And so going back and seeing where it really began, like they took us to Olympia and we went and, you know, got to really see our history and like what the Greeks have built. And now living that out where like America is amazing now because it's such a melting pot, but we don't want to forget our roots and what makes us so special as Greek people and Greek Americans. So I really feel like it was a great blend of like learning about our past and like being educated on different aspects of our culture, whether it was a cooking lesson or a trip, you know, somewhere. Um, 
and those relationships with the other students. So I feel like it was the best blend of both. And it's something that you just couldn't get anywhere in America or with any kind of like program where you're reading from a text or watching a movie or having a discussion or even going to a party with Greek people. It's like it had everything in it. I really feel like it presented the best holistic experience. Well, if you, if you spent five minutes in Greek school, you definitely have something in common, right? <laughs> Terrible. Tabitha. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely echo what um, everyone else is saying. Um, I also think that it's really open, me for me personally, uh, trying to just explore like my heritage more and understanding more of the of the culture i also think it's given me like a lot of respect for other cultures as well when i when i travel because i can understand like certain things that may be may seem odd to somebody else uh could also seem you know normal to me and my family and i think that's really important just as as humans like making sure that we are understanding of everybody's traditions and keeping um those things alive is really important just as a society and you hit you hit on something because I noticed, you know, that after the trip, a lot more people travel internationally, you know, than before the trip. I think we kind of opened their, everybody's eyes up a little bit. Nicole, um, yeah, I think there's the past component um, of just it's it's your identity, right? It's where your families have walked uh, for generations, and so um, having that kind of core piece of your identity and being able to connect with it is really amazing. Um, and then there's the more forward looking uh, present part around I, like to me, it's almost like a second family that I've gained all over the country. Um, that's been just really special. And especially as the Greek community is a little bit more dispersed. Um, it's a really great way for uh, that I've seen for us to come together on like a very national scale, which is really great. Chicago. <laughs> that's um, big yeah. <laughs> so just echoing, um, I, I really like what Nicole and, and Shannon mentioned around preserving Greek heritage. I mean, Greece obviously has had such a profound impact on our history, our society, who we are. And I think the previous generations that have immigrated to America, um, you know, that's that's been brought forward. But I think having which Heritage Greece has had such a great impact on is in, increasing that level of self-awareness of what what makes Greek heritage special? What makes our yayas and papus and mothers and fathers special? Um, and taking those things forward and preserving that. Because I think um, if you don't have that awareness, I, in, in previous generations, I would imagine it was just second nature, but just given, you know, living in a melting pot like the United States, um, you know, it's, it's very easy to kind of forget what those little things that make your family and, and your heritage special are. So just having that awareness. Turn it back to our moderators. All right, yeah. taking the reins back from Art. Um, <laughs> so, Josh, something Nick just said made me think, and then Art, you threw me off. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, I guess I want to talk about now, you know, obviously you come back from Greece from after your program and you're like, I'm ready, put olive oil on everything. I'm going to speak in Greek 24 seven. And then you, just, <laughs> you can't, you have to go back to your normal life. Um, what have you guys tried to, like, even if it's a little thing, what has really come back with you from Greece? For me, it was Alex Calamos telling me that you can eat almonds and dried cranberries together, and that blew my mind. I still do that eight years later. <laughs> like, are there any little things like that that have, have changed ever you took this trip? Uh, anybody go for it <laughs> I, I want to say this is this must this is gonna out me as a terrible Greek I'm sorry for this but someone on the trip a good friend of mine introduced me to like the black Kalamata olives and before that I had never liked olives I just didn't like them I didn't ever eat them but after that she's like I think you'll like this kind I know you don't like olives so I ate that one I did enjoy it and now I am obsessed with olives. I love them. They are the best. I don't understand what was wrong with me the first 21 years of my life, but we have come past that point. And thanks to Harry, I will say my love of olives. I still don't like olives. I've tried. I know. Oh, no. Okay. We got to try the good ones. We'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to do a taste test. Yeah. Yeah. Olive tasting. <laughs> I would say for me, I always growing up, I remember taking Spanish lessons in school and I was so bad. I thought I just could never learn a language. And then actually doing the class uh, in, in Greece and learning very little 
um, bits and pieces there, I kind of felt like, oh, maybe I can, maybe I just wasn't interested in learning Spanish and I'm interested in learning Greek. And now I take uh, Greek lessons at the National Hellenic Museum with Nick too. So I feel like that's something I kind of pulled and thought I changed my perspective of, oh yes, I actually can do this. I don't have to, you know, say it's not possible for me. <laughs> I love that. I, I will say in college, because I knew I wanted to go on this trip, they, they offered ancient Greek. And I was like, well, I'm going to take ancient Greek. That's cool. And then I'll be able to do everything in Greece. Well, taking ancient Greek and thinking you could speak modern Greek is like taking Latin and thinking you could speak English. It was terrible. <laughs> I pronounced everything wrong, but it was so cool. And you're right. Like the language aspect is just so neat that you can do it. Any of us can do it. That's what my one wife, thing. You my wife flunked it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, except for her. <laughs> oh man. Um gosh, I feel like I could just like talk about like random bits and pieces of Heritage Greece forever, but I don't want people watching this to be like, I don't I don't get the joke there. Um <laughs> but I wanna ask to we saw so many different sites of Greece. You saw the, the mountains, you saw the relics, the the water, the beaches. Um Kind of explain to me, and anybody can start with this, what your favorite um, landmark or anything, a piece of Greek topography that you still to this day are like, man, I can't wait to go back there. I think for me it was um, going up by the sea where the oracle was and having heard like all of the stories and all of the mythology about the oracle actually getting to be there with all of the other Heritage Greece participants and the peers and taking that long bus ride up there and just being there and walking around and seeing all of these artifacts and relics. And it looks like it's been so well preserved that nobody's touched it in thousands of years and being there and seeing the effort that people put into building these things and that they persisted and thinking through all of the Greek school stories of the Oracle um, prophesizing all of these different ambiguously worded things where no matter what happens, she's always right because it's so vaguely worded. Um, <laughs> just being there in person and seeing it up close was unforgettable. Perspective of, oh yes, I actually can do this. I don't know. That was weird. Um, <laughs> Nicole, which one was your favorite? Um, for sure, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Um, like seeing the evidence and you hear about it and you see it on TV, but actually being there and watching it uh, is very, very special. Uh, Elizabeth, I'll let you go next. Um, I really liked seeing Olympia. I just thought it was super, like, it was incredible that any of those ruins are still around and like learn and getting to like run. I mean, I did not come in first by any means, but getting to run the um, Olympic, like, uh, the race, you know, that they do in the Olympics. And then also I thought it was a really special moment because all the like peers and all the like Heritage Greece kids, we all kind of did this like ceremony for the winners, a guy and the girl. And we sang, I think in Greek and in English. And it was just a cool like moment of kind of tradition and trying to be like what that maybe somewhat would have been what it was like way back when. So I think that was really unique and interesting and unexpected. Heritage Greece 2013 did not go to Olympia, so I have some complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it all. <laughs> um, Nick, how about you? Yeah, mine was definitely the Temple of Poseidon. Uh, seeing the sunset over the uh, Temple of Poseidon was so cool. And I think others have echoed um, just in general, when you see ruins that old, it's so fun to just kind of be there and imagine how old these are and just imagine what life was back when you know these temples were in actual use, I think is just really cool in general. How about you? I was actually gonna say Sunyo as well. So I was gonna say the Temple of Poseidon, um, but I'll change it and I'll say that when on my trip, uh, we actually did a sailing um, overnight where we got to sleep over on the, on the sailboats and docked. Um, and I would say actually just being in the middle of the sea like that. That was pretty awesome and getting to see like the sunset and just jumping in the water off the boat. That was really amazing. I remember seeing that on Instagram and on Facebook and I was like, man, we didn't do that. Like, yeah, <laughs> that it was, was really fun. <laughs> um, Vasiliki, how about you? Yeah, so mine kind of piggybacks off of Tabitha's. I really enjoyed the island trip to Andros 
and we got to go to a monastery. We also, I remember this one night we ate at a Greek restaurant and all started dancing in the middle of the street right by the ports. And that was probably like one of my favorite nights of the trip and was just so spontaneous and just like really truly like I've never been able to recreate that. And, never and, and, your, and your parents night. Yes, obviously. Okay, so there was one night that Art took me and, and a couple other kids, and we went to, like, the best souvlaki place in town. We went and saw the view over the Acropolis. It was, like, such a fun night, and we went to, like, five different food places. I was stuffed, but it was it was a ton of fun. I love that. I'm going to echo off both of y'all because I think the trip to Andres is what stuck with me, too, because I've, I've just never seen water that clear. It was unreal to me. Um, and just being on an, an island that didn't feel so touristy, you know, you felt like you were just on a small town that you could walk down the cobblestone streets to go get your dinner. Uh, I just remember being beautiful sunsets out there. It's just, I've wanted to go back ever since. And I've been saying that for seven years. So I guess it's almost time uh, when, when the world opens up again. <laughs> um, so I guess I kind of want to ask, we all kind of took a leap of faith in doing this. Uh, Cause you're like, I don't know. What if everybody hates me? What if I hate Greece? I guess I'll just try it anyway. Obviously that ended up positive for everybody, but what would you tell people who may be watching this or who may be interested in the program about why they should do it? Paul, I'm going to let you go first. Yeah. Thank you. So there, I mean, I could go on for an entire hour about this one, but that's why I went with you first. Thing, yeah. <laughs> for me, I mean, the trip is incredible. Three weeks in Greece with, now 50 to 60 of people your age but to me what's really stuck the most is everything that happens after the trip part of this alumni network getting to meet everyone and continuing to see everyone programs like heritage america which i know vasiliki just did this past summer um everybody on this uh webinar i've gotten to know with the exception of nick and art not because of the trip itself but because of everything that's happened after the trip and the continued investment that that National Hellenic Society has made in bringing us all together and being proactive in continuing to bring us together, that that opportunity after the fact to have a lifelong network of your Greek peer-aged barea is just immense. Nicole? Um, yeah, I, I have to agree uh, with Paul. I was, it was the first time that the program was going on and I didn't know what to expect and it was uh, I, I just finished high school and it was really such an incredible adventure. Um, it was like the, the classes, seeing the ruins, getting to see Greece, meeting the peers, practicing Greek. I mean, it was such an incredibly immersive experience. And to Paul's later point, the, uh, the after kind of care that happens, um, we have amazing mentoring programs. Um, we have a community of students who after 10 plus years in the program, there are amazing doctors and lawyers and engineers, and it's so kind of phenomenal to see this group of people just really become um, excellent in their field and um, also become just really, really good friends. Um, so really lots of wonderful takeaways. That's the key. Yeah, I would just agree I, with everyone. I think that I could go on and on about how much I loved it and why everyone should go on it. I just think, you know, there's never going to be a time in your life where you're so carefree with kids your age and learning about your culture and your heritage and having that deep link. And like you said, um, uh, Paul, I did Heritage America, which is another program through NHS. And that was absolutely amazing too. Uh, very policy focused. And um, they had Greek members of Congress come to us and it was a two, three day thing. But it's a Thing everyone can do. But yeah, my advice as well is to be to try to meet everyone as quickly as possible. I remember there's there's two days in DC and then you all fly over together. So um, so just kind of try to take advantage of that and act like you've known them your whole life. You will have the best time ever. Elizabeth. Yeah, I would say just go in with an open mind and be like you know, ready to, to, to just meet a lot of people that already you're going to have stuff in common with. Like, it's not like a complete random stranger where you aren't sure about things. I mean, being Greek just kind of comes along with so many shared characteristics and backgrounds and values. And so I guess also just like put effort into those relationships you form. Cause even though it's like two weeks, it flies by and two weeks end of the day does go so fast and isn't that long, but the relationships can 
go on and move forward. I was moving to LA at the time. So I was like, you know, graduated from Ohio State, went on this trip and moved straight to LA like in August. And I actually became better friends with two people from my trip that live in LA. And so that was a cool way of like already finding community in a new city that I was moving to through Heritage Greece, National Hunting Society. And so I really do like, of course, reiterate what everyone said, the community that you get afterwards. It's like you're in this like special club now, like, oh my gosh, you're part of NHS and you're like a, you know, alumni member of, of uh, Heritage Greece and that's never going to end. So it's really cool that you can just get, you know, get into that now as a young person. Tabitha? I have a fire truck going by, so maybe oh. somebody else should go for okay. first. Okay, all right. Nick, are you inside? Can you talk? <laughs> yeah, I'm inside. I, I can only <laughs> through the fire truck. Um, but yeah, I mean, everyone had really good points. I think just in general, um, everyone on this call has had such a rich experience and you really get out of it what you put in. Uh, you have the opportunity to meet some really amazing people, both in your peer group, uh, the teachers, the peers in, in Greece, and also a whole network of people when you come back. And it's, it's a really incredible experience. Um, and you're gonna meet really, really great people that can have a big impact on your life. Um, most of my closest friends I can really attribute back to this trip and the people that I speak with and hang out with on a regular basis. So, I mean, I would just say, you know, embrace the opportunity, put as much as you can into it and you'll really get a lot of reward in the future. All right, Nick, you got to tell your story with Bobby and Dean Metropolis. Go ahead. Bobby and Dean Metropolis. Um, and, you, and you're the best question you asked them. First tell uh, them who Dean Metropolis is. Uh, well, Dean Metropolis is the CEO of um, a private equity fund, and he's a member of NHS. And uh, my best friend, Bobby, who also went on the trip the same year as Tabitha and I, um, actually the year that I met Tabitha in Miami, we were going out one night, and we had a great opportunity to speak to Dean, and I, I think I asked him a pretty- Well, this, uh, is the guy, this is the guy that owns Paps Blue Ribbon. He sold it. Hostess, Ribbon, Giardelli, and bought the Playboy uh, Mansion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His sons bought the Playboy Mansion, and we had a great opportunity to speak with him. And I think I asked him some dumb uh, finance question about his expense ratios when I was a senior in in college. So that was, that was pretty funny. No, but Dean goes, "What the hell's that?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I've heard> <laughs> too, too high but, up to to understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think what's what's great is you get to meet people like that, you know, and rub elbows and be inspired by them. You know, that's the key. Tabitha, is your fire truck gone? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, I have the same um, answers as, as everybody else. And just to like kind of go off of that, I mean, I've gained so much from, from the trip and the trip was such an amazing experience. Um, but also like afterwards, I definitely like made the effort to go to the reunions, like meet up with some of the people that I met. And now uh, like four of the girls that I met on the trip are gonna be my bridesmaids. Uh, they're like my best friends in the world. I mean, Nina and I are gonna get married three days apart. So it's like, you know, we're, we're all like super close and we, uh, I mean, I plan to have these people in my life forever. So I think that it's just like really special, um, the bonds and the relationships that you can make obviously, and then my future husband, too. Um, but, you know, everything, all the bonds that you can make, uh, I think it's really what you put in it, into it. Um, but worst case scenario, you got a really fun trip to Greece, and you, you know, if that's all you get, that's all you get, but it was still amazing. So you don't have to have one extreme or the other. If you're just trying to go to, to Greece and learn more about your heritage, you can, or if you want to, uh, you can make lifelong friends. It's up to you. And you could do both. <laughs> I think that's what happened a lot of, on my trip in 2013 I remember I think it was like the first day there were 20 30 of us and we were at some restaurant and instead of sitting at separate tables we shoved all the tables together and sat in one line and I remember being like wow I guess everybody's gonna be friends here like there were there were no clicks everybody you could sit with anybody and you'd be fine uh, I, I have a group I have a group text with with Athie Levis and Kathleen Kavanaugh Art that I've had for seven years we went to Athie's wedding together like so it, it's you really do keep those friends because two weeks in a foreign country with strangers ends up with people that you keep for the rest of your life for sure one suggestion i would have too if you are going on the trip especially with larger groups um now i did definitely click 
very quickly with the people that I'm still friends with today, but I definitely made a conscious effort, especially the second half of the trip to make sure, you know, I'm not sitting next to the same exact people every night at dinner. Um, I'm definitely going and sitting with somebody else. And I think that that's really important because even if you're, you know, not clicking immediately, that's always somebody that you can call when you're in their city, meet up with for dinner. You don't have to be the closest of friends, but you should really try and connect with everybody um, on the trip because it's, you know, it's, it's great to have people everywhere. That's awesome advice and works. You're right. Um, Art, I don't know what to do from here. <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, we find out what everybody's doing now. It's Shannon, we know that oh, you're a well, reporter. What we're doing now. About, yeah, no, tell us a little bit about how you, you know, you rose the ranks. We're so proud of you. Thank you. You know, and, and, uh, and I want you to meet some, some special people, as you know, you know, to, yeah. to, to boost and help your career along. And that's part of what we want to do is to help everybody advance in their career with the idea the Greek thing that will give back, you know, in any way we can. It doesn't mean just financial support, but mentoring, being there for each other, you know, that's part of giving back. So tell us a little bit about how you, your career. Yes, uh, I'm a, a news reporter and fill-in anchor in Knoxville, Tennessee, at the NBC affiliate. Um, and I've, I've kind of made my niche here as kind of the reporter who will do anything on television. So <laughs> they let me, uh, they let me go to Greek Fest. And I was like, I'm dancing on TV. And they said, all right, do whatever you want. So I'm sitting here like stuffing uh, baklava on my mouth, like with the Greek girls on the dance floor. It was a great time. But I was like, I'm Greek. I gotta, I gotta do it. Um, so, so that's been fun. Um, but so I've definitely come out of my shell. And, in, and because of things like this, where you're talking to strangers all the time, whether it's, it's in Greece or it's, I'm interviewing different people every day, um, definitely the, the conversation skills that came with all this, I still use on a daily basis, whether it's doing Zoom interviews now in my guest bedroom or if, I, if I'm live somewhere talking on a, on a murder scene or a, you know, a happy, happy reunion, they're all completely different types of conversations that you have to be able to have. And having um, this kind of open dialogue within my Greek peers for the past seven years has definitely, I think, uh, supplemented what I do on a daily basis. And you're an Auburn Tiger. Ah, War Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I live not far now from Vasiliki so you went you go to Vanderbilt so yeah I actually was gonna say something but I just got to Nashville today so that's really funny <laughs> um I guess you can go ahead now you're at Vanderbilt I've already started go on tell us about yourself perfect sounds good <laughs> Take it away. So I'm a senior at Vanderbilt studying economics and minoring in computer science and business um, some aspirations of mine are to go to into consulting and then into then to law school and then eventually have my own social enterprise. I have a lot of background in social entrepreneurship and I'm actually doing a huge fundraiser recently called Greek Week, which is basically Yacht Week, but for Greek Americans, yeah. Canadians, etc. Um, feel free to give it a follow on um, at Greek underscore week on Instagram, but it should be a really fun trip and another way to connect with your culture. Yeah, it's a trip in Greece. So, and, and hopefully a lot of the, uh, some of the alum are gonna promote it that you can all go. And you started another website, right? Or a company. Yeah. yeah, so I started my own nonprofit called Okay to Play. And what we do is we take old and used cell phones and then recycle them for money. And then with that money, we buy orphans and foster home children toys. So that's, that's one awesome. of them. Yeah. <laughs> Just a minor little thing, right? Paul. Hey, everybody. So uh, I currently work at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab. Went to Johns Hopkins, got my bachelor's, my master's, stayed in the bubble, uh, transitioned over to our university-affiliated research center, supporting the DOD, uh, serving our country as best I can, and one of our senior fellows at the lab. So we do a lot of things, 8,000 people supporting the most senior levels of uh, Navy and government decisions. One of our senior fellows is Admiral James Stavridis. He was the former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO. He's written several books. And through the Heritage America program that Basiliki mentioned a little while ago, he's been one of their returning uh, guest speakers and had an opportunity to um, speak to a lot of their uh, program participants. And he's also a senior fellow at um, the Johns Hopkins APL where I work. So it's been such a gratifying experience knowing that I could take my academic degree and transition right to a company still under the university umbrella where every day I'm leading technical teams at the cutting edge of research and development, uh, serving our nation, 
serving the warfighters, supporting the men and women in harm's way, as well as um, folks on the front lines of COVID-19 national response. And for those interested, if you Google Johns Hopkins COVID-19, the university and um, the applied physics lab are really on the front lines of making sure to do the best they can for um, saving and protecting our world. And to all of those uh, folks working on that effort and all those on the front lines, thank you for what you're doing in this uh, global pandemic. And we, uh, we use that data all the time in our reporting. So, <laughs> and you're national co chair of, along with I'm Beth. also the national co chair of the Heritage Greece Alumni Network. So, mm -hmm. all of the 500 plus alumni, um, we just do all kinds of events, programming, communications. And for those alumni who are on the, uh, on the webinar right now, who are tuning in on Facebook, who are watching this in the archive, if anybody wants to get more involved, please reach out because once you go to the trip, you are forever an alumni as a couple of folks have mentioned so far. And we're just so excited to have everybody continuing to participate. Nicole. Um, I studied information systems at Emory University in Atlanta. I'm originally from Connecticut. Um, I've been at Google uh, for the last six years. I work in security engineering as a program manager and I'm studying security systems at the University of Oxford in the UK, which has been a, a really fun experience. Um, some of the kind of fun work, uh, the fun projects that I've gotten to do as a part of the Heritage Greece alumni are running our mentorship program. Uh, so we have students who have gone through the program uh, come back and uh, offer to be mentors to some of our newer students, uh, which has been uh, really, really nice. And she, she helped the NHS get a Google grant and we thank her for it. Thank you. Anytime. Elizabeth, you're doing some cool things. Guys, uh, doing, doing a couple things. Um, so my biggest project I was working on for the last few years was this documentary series uh, that came out on Netflix in, in December of lab this past year. And that was called The Confession Killer. If anyone wants to watch it, it is not scary. It is more about corruption and crazy stuff happening in Texas in the 1980s. But um, that was my big project I was working on for a while. But during that, I also am a writer. And so this past, like during COVID, I have been working with a company called Story Terrace and I interview people and then turn our conversations and the interviews into like life stories, memoirs. So that's been something fun to do. And I get a lot of meaning out of kind of hearing people's lives and what they've gone through and just learning a lot um, about people. And then the show my sister and I are working on has been a fun little side project that I've been doing. So it's just been a lot of different things going on in the last few months and I've been enjoying it, trying to figure all this COVID stuff out with everybody. So I, um, I went to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago um, and I studied painting there. And when I first left school, I started working in uh, corporate and residential art consulting. Um, but then I, uh, since then, uh, transitioned into uh, working as a project manager at the Conservation Center, um, and where we do actual uh, art conservation and restoration, so um, pieces from private collectors, uh, small museums that don't have their own in-house conservators, they'll send their um, artwork that is either damaged or it needs, uh, you know, just general uh, conservation and preservation. Uh, to us and we'll I'll kind of see the projects through so we do some really cool stuff um, if you follow their Instagram you can see some really really cool projects that we work on um, if you're just interested in history and and preservation of, of art objects it's it's a fun follow um, as well and then one thing that we've been doing in uh, quarantine is we started um, this past spring just with the alumni network so if anybody is interested we're gonna restart it soon um, there is going to be, we, we started the system with uh, the Greek um, peers uh, in Dury. They uh, volunteered to teach some of us Greek American alumni students that went on the trip uh, a little bit, do Greek lessons once a week. Uh, so we're going to restart that up again. It was really fun. Uh, it was kind of very informal. Uh, we had a light, like a loose uh, lesson plan to do each day. Um, it was only on Saturdays, and we're going to do it again for like eight week periods. Uh, but it's really fun, and the it's all you know your own peers, so we can learn some of the um, you know, more like 
casual conversation words. Um, I know that the uh, advanced lessons they were doing, they were actually watching sitcoms in Greek and then they were going back and discussing what they were watching to make sure that they understood some of the jokes that uh, an American um, might not really pick up on. So uh, that's really fun. And then the beginner class, they're just going straight to the basics, but it's really fun. If anybody is interested, you can message me. Nico. So I graduated from Arizona State University um, studying finance and computer information systems, spent four years at KPMG in management consulting and was recently in uh, corporate strategy at an events management company, um, preparing for um, applications to, to go to business school uh, the fall of the following year. Um, and one thing that, you know, art and NHS in general has been super helpful as I've advanced through my career is just being able to provide mentorship and guidance and, um, you know, introducing my art, introducing myself to, you know, leaders in the industry in different industries and NHS and providing really great mentorship opportunities to kind of, you know, as I progress through my career. So that's been super helpful uh, and very, very much appreciated. And uh, one thing that Tabitha and I are also involved in, um, in Chicago, we do a lot of things with the National uh, Hellenic Museum. One of the projects that we help with is the uh, National Hellenic Museum's oral history project where um, we work with, you know, older Greeks or Greek Americans um, and help try and capture their Greek American story, whether it be, you know, their immigration to the United States, them growing up as a, as a child, uh, but there's, you know, many Greek American stories out there um, and we're involved in, in helping capture those with the museum. And, you know, the museum also has a lot of other really great programs and um, fundraising events that we, we love to volunteer for uh, throughout the year. It was great to talk about Heritage Greece. You know, it's something that really shaped my life seven years ago. And it's just so nice to talk about with people who understand and want to hear about it instead of, you know, just blabbering on to anybody who will listen. Um, so thank you guys for sharing your experiences too, because it kind of shows like while they were all different, we all have our own memories. We all shared in the same experience. Yes. Thank you. And we'll do it again, okay? This is cool. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.